As we all know, we are approaching the Thanksgiving weekend. Thanksgiving is a time for food, fun, celebrations, holidays. Every year, families from all around this country get together to enjoy a meal together, to spend some quality time with the family, to reconnect. And that's exactly what I and my family are going to do this week. Children especially enjoy Thanksgiving too. I do not know of any organization that is open during this time. Now, for some of you, this season, or maybe just this year, may be lonely. It may not be fun and celebration. You may have gone through a death, a divorce, separation, rejection, financial breakdown, or any other painful situations that you are unable to share with any other person. But from, let me remind you from personal experience. There are a couple of things that you can remind yourself. First, first of all, tell yourself that there are hundreds of others who are in the same painful situation as you are, or maybe even in a worse situation than you are. And what can you do to help them? What can you do to bring life and light into their lives? And the second thing, remember that God is in control. Now, you may not have anything to do with God or the church. Or you may even be thinking that God is completely forgotten about you. Whatever the case might be. If you can compel your heart, if you can force your heart to trust in God, give up your heart to trust God. I can assure you that God will make all things new, all things beautiful. I'm speaking this from my experience and also from the experience of many others. One of my favorite quotations from my favorite, one of my favorite authors, C.S. Lewis, it goes like this. Wrong will be right when Aslan comes in sight. At the sound of his roar, sorrows will be no more. When he bears his teeth, winter meets its death. And when he shakes his mane, we shall have spring again. Now this quotation is taken from a mythical story, but it's very, very true when you look from a biblical perspective. So today, my, my dear friends, do compel your heart, move your heart to trust God who has complete control. The, we, we all have heard in parts at least about King David. And King David says like this, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. It's a present tense. So he trusted in God and he is helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices and with my song will I praise thee. Now David had to go through a lot of persecutions in life, troubles. Run, running away from his enemies, running away from his own son who decided to kill him. Yet he says, my heart greatly rejoices. And why does he say that? Because his heart trusted in God and he is helped. My family and I, we have been through different experiences. We have experienced God's favor God's blessings, prosperity, three beautiful children, jobs, education, and so on and so forth. But at the same time, we have been through several trials and tribulations, 
sorrows, dark moments where nobody could help us. Now during those times, I had to force my heart to trust God. There seemed no hope. There seemed no light at the end of the tunnel. Sometimes I just thought, God's forgotten about me. God doesn't think about me anymore. In my weakest point, I have thought like that. But then I went back into my closet and I said, God, forgive me for thinking that way. I know you haven't forgotten about me. And my dear friends, God is so merciful, so kind. He knows us. He knows our weaknesses. And he gave me the grace that enabled my heart to trust in him. And I can tell you with full confidence, I'm not trying to deceive anyone, but with full confidence I can tell you that he is my help. He is, even to this present day, he is my help. And God gave us the grace to go through our difficult situations. And today we rejoice, our heart rejoices in God. My dear friends, I would like to conclude by saying that even though when we think about Thanksgiving, it could be turkey and mashed potatoes and pumpkin pies, all of which I would absolutely love. But it's not all about that, just that. It's being grateful for the things that you do have, that you can cherish, not for things that you do not have. Let's be thankful for what we have. Let's be grateful for what we have. And above all, what can we give to the others? What can we give to those who do not have? And that's what, that's what Thanksgiving is all about. This Thanksgiving, I'm grateful to God for sending me, sending all of us, His only begotten Son, Jesus. I'm thankful to God for my husband and my three children. I'm thankful to God for my family and friends. And I would like to wish all of you a happy Thanksgiving. May God bless you.